Hi, I'm Dr. T, and I'm a pediatrician. On Ask Dr. T, I answer health questions from teens. Questions ranging from safe sex, to self-love, to questions about body parts. Let's get this episode started. So this is a little bit different format than my other videos, but I've been asked by quite a few people on healthy strategies to gain weight. And I understand also that in our society, we often talk more about weight loss, but I can cover those in another episode, but we really don't talk about healthy ways to gain weight beyond the eat more, but that's not super helpful. So I'm going to go over a five step plan of healthy weight gain for adolescents that is approved by the American Academy of Pediatrics. So hopefully this helps and keep me posted in the comments if you have any feedback. When we talk about weight gain, we also want to emphasize that when you're seeking gaining weight, the healthy way to put on extra weight is going to be emphasizing the lean muscle mass and not necessarily fat as the source of body weight. So this is all going to be talking about healthy ways to gain weight. Before I get into the five steps, I want to just give a little background on being a little bit thinner. First of all, there's nothing wrong with a given body type. We are all different shapes and sizes because of largely our genetics. And if your parents are a little bit thinner, you're probably going to be a little bit thinner too. On the other hand, if your parents carry a little extra weight, you may as well. So just keep in mind that there are some things that you are just born with and at the end of the day, you're okay. But there are ways to bulk up and so I'm going to give you these five pointers. If you ever have any questions, though, certainly chat with your doctor or nutritionist or a dietitian um, about some specific weight gain recommendations. All right, so the first part of this five step plan is really more just figuring out the timing of weight gain. So typically, when an individual is going through puberty, there's going to be a period of rapid height gain and not a lot of bulking up in the process. And so you have to allow your body that time to go through puberty appropriately. Hormones really do control the way that we put on muscle mass, and specifically for those with male body parts, that's testosterone. And when you're just starting out puberty, it's really not realistic to think that you are going to be a bodybuilder. You have to really wait until you're into the end of puberty, toward the end of it, or after puberty um, to really plan on bulking up uh, safely and effectively because it's kind of run by hormones. So keep that in mind and don't have unrealistic expectations if you're mid puberty or early puberty that you're going to bulk up very easily because it's probably not going to happen as easily and safely as it will if you wait until the end of puberty. Okay, so that's part number one is just really understanding your body. All right, so the second step in this is going to be gaining that lean muscle mass in the form of resistance training. And so you can do this alternating in one of two ways. So there's going to be the one that causes muscle hypertrophy or muscles bulking up and then strength gaining. So g increasing that amount of strength that you can handle. So the best way to do this is really to alternate different parts of your body. So don't focus on your arms two days in a row, you want to give them a rest. So arms one day, thighs the next, okay? So this is how you do it. And I'll put some links in the uh, description of the episode as well to where you can find some specific exercises to uh, focus on specific muscle groups. For building muscle, you're going to do heavier amounts but shorter reps. For strength training, you're going to do smaller amounts of weight, but increased reps. Again, this is step two. You want to work on your resistance training. And a couple of key parts of that. Never work on the same muscle two days in a row. And then alternate with your muscle hypertrophy and your strength training. And again, check out the links in the description of the show to figure out specific exercises for each muscle group. All right, step three for gaining healthy weight is going to be increasing your calories. And again, you want to make sure these aren't just 
empty calories like an extra bag of Doritos, but you want to make sure they're in the form of healthier nutrient dense foods like avocados, um, cheeses or yogurt, uh, nuts and berries, especially dried fruits are going to be high nutrient packed foods that are going to help you increase your calories every day. So aim to, if you're able to count your calories every day, aim to increase your calories by three to 400 calories per day. Other ways that you can increase your calories if you don't have much of an appetite is in the form of fluids. It, things like whole milk, lattes, nutrient rich shakes like Ensure or Carnation Instant Breakfast. On the flip side, if liquids tend to fill you up, don't drink them with meals. So put them between meals because you do want to make sure you're taking in as much as you can during your meal time. Step number four is going to be increase your protein. When you're building that lean muscle, there's a lot of turnover, cell turnover and muscle breakdown. And so you want to make sure you're replacing that with good, healthy protein. So things that are high in protein, you can always look at the labels of foods as well, but things like nuts, yogurt, try to stick with the low sugar yogurt, cheeses and whole milk, eggs, meats. Those are all going to be really good sources of extra protein. Specifically, the formulation for how much protein you should be getting is 1.5 to 1.8 grams per kilogram per day. So you take your weight in kilograms, multiply it by 1.5 or 1.8, and that's how many grams of protein you should be getting a day. Just a little math fun for you. And this brings us also to the idea of if you don't have a big appetite, you can always sort of eat five meals, small meals a day rather than two to three big meals. And that can also help you evenly distribute your protein and calorie increases. Carrying around granola bars that are rich in nuts and dried fruits, nut butters, like peanut butter, or almond butter, um, and then eating those throughout the day rather than waiting to eat in big bulk meals when you know you're not going to be that hungry. So uh, don't neglect the snacks. Those are an excellent opportunity for increasing your protein and your calories. And lastly, step number five, when you are training, make sure you give your body time to rest between sessions. That's going to be really important in allowing your muscles to recover, relax, and build up even more. So to recap, we've got step one, know your body and have realistic expectations. Waiting till the end of puberty is really going to be the best time to try to bulk up. Two, make sure you're doing some resistance training. So increase that muscle density as well as strength. Step number three, increase your calories by three to 400 calories per day. Step number four, make sure you're getting enough protein. And then step number five is going to be rest. Give your body time to recover. And those are the five sort of steps recommended from the American Academy of Pediatrics and me, I'm, I support them. I'm board certified in pediatrics. So I love those recommendations. Again, give me feedback. And if you have any other questions, um, I'll put some links in the description of the show and hope this helps. And remember, if you have a question for Ask Dr. T, you can either respond in this video or submit through my website, askdrt.net.